Knitters make mistakes in their knitting all the time, but sometimes the mistakes aren't caught until after the project is off the needles, which can make fixing the errors tricky. In this week's Technique Tuesday video, I'll demonstrate how to use a classic embroidery technique to fix a garter stitch border that's missing a ridge of garter stitch. If you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, tap or mouse over the video playback area of your screen to reveal the chapter titles and starting points of each section. In this little swatch, I have stockinette in the center and then I have garter stitch borders. And I have an error along here, along the edge. It's a really common error. It's one that I make fairly frequently when I am working with garter stitch borders and a stockinette background. And that is that when I was working across a wrong side row, I did my three knit stitches to, for the garter stitch border and then I switched to purl and I worked the entire row in purl. I forgot to switch back to knits in order to create that garter stitch border. And so what I was left with was kind of this gap in the garter stitch border where it's in stockinette instead. Now this is an error um, that I've shown in a previous video how to fix if your stitches are still on the needles, how you can drop down just the border stitches off of your needle and knit them back up correctly. And I will link to that video up at the top and also down below. But occasionally you don't catch your mistakes when the stitches are on the needle. Or you may catch the mistake so much further along that the amount of dropping down you would have to do is just more than you really want to contemplate. So what I'm going to do is show you how you can use an embroidery technique to kind of fake that garter stitch ridge that is missing. So let's take a look at how these garter stitch ridges are formed. Uh, I have three stitches in my uh, border and you can see that for every one of these ridges, there are actually two sets of bumps that are offset from each other. You have the upper set of bumps right here, and there's three of them. There's one for each column of stitches. And then underneath, you see that there are two connecting each of those bumps right there. And then at the point where it transitions from garter stitch to stockinette, you have kind of a half of a bump. You don't have a full bump. If it was a full bump, it would be going across the front of the stitch right here. So it ends at that point in between uh, these two stitches. And then we need to look at the actual gap, where the gap is. So we can see that there are three rows of knit stitches and we can identify them because we can see the legs of the stitches. They have that V of the stitch and the head of the stitch is behind the work. So the heads of the stitches are behind and that is true for all three rows. So this is the place where that garter ridge is missing. And it's the heads of these three stitches that should be on the front and are what these three bumps represent. The bumps that are below should be the running threads between this top row of knits. So the running thread is that strand that connects one stitch to its neighbor. Uh, and that should also be on the front. So this third row of stitches creates the bottom row of bumps and the second row of stitches creates the top row of bumps. I've threaded a yarn needle and I'm looking at this third row of stitches, this one right here. I'm going to look at where the V of the stitch, where that leg disappears down into the back of the fabric. So I'm going to open that up and I can see that there's kind of a hole there in the work and I'm going to bring my yarn needle up 
to the right of the third stitch. So we have the salvage stitch, that's stitch one, stitch two, stitch three. So I'm going to bring my yarn needle up through the fabric in the same place where the leg of the stitch is going down. We're gonna bring the yarn needle up. I'm gonna pull it through and I'm gonna leave myself a four to six inch tail so that I can weave that in later. So I'm going to go across to the left and I'm going to go down in the fabric. Again, where this leg goes down, that's where I want my needle to go down. So I have created one horizontal bar across the work. Now I'm going to bring my yarn needle up to the right of the second stitch. So I'm going to bring it up here through the work. And I'm going to put it down through this location here. I wanna make sure when I'm sticking my needle through that I'm not sticking it through one of these strands. I don't wanna split any stitches because if I need to adjust the tension of any of these stitches I'm creating, uh, I want to make sure I haven't split any stitches and that I can do that easily. So now I've created the second bump. This is my yarn tail. I want to get that out of the way. So now I want to create the third bump and I'm going to bring the yarn around the edge of the work in order to bring it down through the surface here. So this is going to create that edge bump that you see on the edge of garter stitch fabric. Once again, I wanna check that I'm not splitting anything on the back side. Okay, so I've got my three horizontal bumps. Now what I need to do is I need to create these two lower bumps. So I'm going to bring my yarn needle up through the center of the stitch that's below this horizontal strand. So I'm gonna bring my needle up through the center right here. And then I'm going to bring it down through the center of that selvage stitch, that edge stitch right there. And again, I wanna make sure I'm not splitting any stitches when I go through. So I've created that one. And now I'm going to come under this horizontal strand here through the center of that stitch below it. And then you can see these two vertical things. I want my yarn needle to go down where the other uh, stitch went up. And again, check, check for splitting. So I go through. I've got that one. And now I need to do the final one. And I, this is where I'm going to create this little half stitch. So at this point, I'm gonna come up between those two stitches rather than up through the center of the fourth one. I'm gonna come up in between them and then, one, and then bring it once again down, make sure I'm not splitting anything as I do that. So now I've created these little bumps. They don't quite look exactly like the others. I can take my fingers and I can uh, pinch things together so that they, they come together a little bit more. They look a little bit more like that. If I feel like these are too loose, I can adjust the tension of those bumps. Pull that one up a little bit. And so at this point, get these tails out of the way. 
Now we can look at the fix and it is really hard to see it. So somebody who is really looking for this might be able to spot it, but it's going to really distract the eye um, away from that sort of span of stockinette, that gap of stockinette that was there before. So this is a, a really nice way to fix that edge. Now you are on the back side going to be able to see that you've created these back stitches. So you are going, so th this works if this is def you know, definitely the right side of the work um, and this is the wrong side of the work. Um, and then you are going to, to weave these tails in the back just like you would any other yarn tails. But this is a really nice fix um, if you have missed a little bit of garter stitch. I said at the start of the video that knitters make mistakes all the time, and I am no exception. A few days ago, I was finishing my latest vintage sweater project when I discovered that the base of my garter stitch buttonhole band was missing its initial ridge of garter stitch. After trying a few different things, I settled on using the back stitch technique I demonstrated today to fill in the flat stockinette with a fake garter stitch ridge. While the result in my sweater is adequate, I've honed the technique a bit to produce a slightly better result, which is what I demonstrated today. For more videos on fixing mistakes in your finished knitting or in your works in progress, check out my Fixing Mistakes playlist over here. If you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.